I've been using MailChimp for about six years. And even though I've generally said stuff like, um, although I'm not happy with it, although it has all these problems, it's still functional, it's still working um, for me. So recently I've found that I'm no longer happy with MailChimp um, and I was frustrated enough with it to actively move to another list. So for the last two months, I've been mailing my autoresponders and my email list over to MailerLite. It shouldn't really have taken that long, um, but I have big autoresponder series, so I have to rewrite them all and redesign them all. So it's kind of a big um, project, which is why I've been avoiding it for a long time. But I'm pretty excited about moving to MailerLite. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the three reasons, the three main reasons I prefer MailerLite um, to MailChimp. Not only why I switch, but why I'm I'm excited about using MailerLite. So number one is just pricing. MailerLite is cheaper than MailChimp. Um, my list especially has been growing. I try to keep it, like I've had to keep cutting my list down because it's too expensive. So I'm paying like $350 a month um, and it's gone up. It, this price looks a little different from what I was paying before. Um, and I think I've had bigger lists. I've probably gotten up to 70 or 80K before. And so when my, my email list gets to like 350 a month, then I'm thinking, well, crap, I'm spending 4,000 bucks uh, a year about on a mailing list. And then you like, unless you're making lots of money back from your mailing list, that's painful. And even if you're making lots of money from your mailing list, that's that's a big expense um, that you want to cut down. So one of the ways to cut it down is to, you know, get rid of a lot of the unengaged subscribers. Um, but that's not really what I want to do. I want to be building bigger lists and keep engaging people. Partly it's because my autoresponder series aren't great. So I, I've been also rewriting my autoresponder series. Um, but even if it's pretty good, this is a lot to pay. So if I just go over to um, the pricing on MailerLite. Also, I'll mention one of the reasons I started with MailChimp is that it's free for the first 2000 subscribers. Um, but MailerLite is also free for the first 1,000, so it's not that big of a difference. I think once you get up to 1,000 subscribers, um, and you can do that pretty quickly, then it's okay to pay as long as you have a really good autoresponder series that's that's selling something, so you're making some money from your list. Um, the pricing isn't terrible here. So for the same amount, about 50,000, it's 140 a month. So it's about 100 bucks less than um, what MailChimp's is for the same number of subscribers so i would try to keep my list at around like if i if i keep building lists um a lot of them are going to be un, un, unengaged if i want to keep getting rid of them and just focusing on like the core active group of of people who are reading my emails um fifty thousand is a lot it's a lot of people i don't necessarily think you need more than that if you're curating your list if you're building the right kind of list with the right people and engaging them well um, so this is generally where I would want to keep my list at about this range. So I'm a little more comfortable paying 140 instead of 240. It does save me some money. But um, and also one more thing about the pricing is that um, Mailchimp, the way that it organizes its lists. Let me go into into Mailchimp. So as far as I know, with Mailchimp, you're still paying double for subscribers who are on different list. So if I have someone who is on, they sign up for free book cover templates, and then they also sign up for some of my book marketing stuff or my free book marketing book, um, then I have, it's counting as double subscribers because they're on different lists and I'm paying twice. So I may not actually have 50,000 subscribers. I may have, you know, 30,000, but a lot of them are on more than one list. Um, and there's ways around it by setting up segments. Um, you can combine lists, you can do different things with your lists. Um, you can break li a list into segments so that they're like on one main group list, but also on individual segments so that you can kind of group them differently. Um, but that's a little, I've tried a, a little bit of that to try to get my costs down on MailChimp, but it's just been a bit um, confusing. It's not exactly the way that I want to organize my lists anyway. So that's one of the main draws for MailerLite and also for ConvertKit. Um, which I haven't started using yet. ConvertKit, I, I hear it is great. It has a lot of advanced features, um, but it's also more expensive. And I'm not looking right now for a more expensive um, service. I'm looking for a less expensive service that can do all the same things um, or even more things. So MailerLite's a good fit for me right now. Um, and I believe that MailerLite has the same benefit, which is just that um, when you have different lists, it's not double charging you for opt-in. So people could be subscribed to two of my different lists, but MailerLite would only count it as one subscriber. So I'm only paying one time per email. 
So I'll find out exactly how much I save when I switch over, but I guess I would be saving like a little bit more in Miller Lite just because it's not charging me for those extra double subscribers. So the second reason that I really like Miller Lite is just for ease of use um, and the navigation. I've been increasingly frustrated with MailChimp, partly because they're introducing all of these new features and they move some stuff around so I couldn't find them. Um, it's really not an intuitive platform anymore um, or very user friendly. So I'll show you quickly what the navigation panels look like. This is, well, let me do MailChimp first. So here's MailChimp and you have lists, um, templates, campaigns, which is fine. On your list, you can create a new list um, or a group, which is a segment of a list. Once I have a list, I'll want to go into setting up the setting up the welcome email. So let me show you what one of my other ones looks like. So this is just a, de a dummy um, email list that's testing with zero contacts. I can import contacts or create a sign-up form. When you have a list on MailChimp, um, you can check the settings and choose whether or not you want um, double opt-in. So that's where you find that feature. Um, generally, I think not. It's not what you want. Um, then you go to sign-up forms and you'd have your general forms, which would control the automatic, like if you have um, that double opt-in clicked, checked, then they will get a confirmation thank you page, a final welcome email, um, a confirmation uh, email. So they would have to, like, they sign up for your list and then they have to click to say, yes, I agree to be confirmed and subscribed to this email. You would normally want to customize all of those to make them um, more personal and look better. Um, but if you have that opt-in, like the double opt-in turned off, then they may not get all these emails um, anyway. But the other thing you can do with general forms, um, which I've used in the past, is for your basic sign-up form, which is like this, you can tweak it and customize it a little bit into a landing page. Um, so this is what I was using for the last, I don't know, year or two on my fiction. It's not great, but it's simple. It's free because it's with MailChimp. Um, it kind of works. So on my website, I can just link to this one landing page, and this is my opt-in form. The alternative to that um, is to go to your lists and go to your signup forms. And then here you can create embedded forms that you can put on your website or your um, sidebar. You can also build subscriber pop-ups. Um, so you can do some things with MailChimp. You've had these features for a while um, and they look, you know, not so bad. You can have it slide from the bottom. Um, you can display, I would display after 20 seconds. You don't want to dis display too quickly. Um, and you want to have a very clear, specific call to action, opt-in offer, not just subscribe to my mailing list, but get a free book or don't leave without something. Um, you can change how, like this could be your free book image and this could be a short message and subscribe. Um, so you can do some things with MailChimp that look pretty good, which is kind of nice. And then you would just generate the code and then copy the code into your website. But the other kind of cool thing that MailChimp has added recently are actual landing pages. Um, and I'll show you where those are. And this is partly where things get a little confusing just in terms of getting around. So um, two things actually. If I set up a list and I have my list going and I've set up my basic stuff um, and I want to create a landing page for that list also, I have to go over to campaigns, um, create a campaign. And this used to be for like email series. So I think it's a little weird that create a landing page is here under create campaigns, but it's nice that they've started to add some of those features. Um, I can select a list and I can build a landing page. It's not, they don't have like a lot of great looking templates. It's only this basically, um, but I can customize it and tweak it. I can change the background and put like a nice picture landscape. Um, you want, with a lot of the stuff on your site, you want your subscribers to feel some emotions, especially if you write fiction. So like if I write dark fantasy, I want a dark spooky forest in the background. 
um, here because that's just easy branding. It's part of the positioning um, to let readers know what they can expect when they sign up to your list and what they can get from your free book offer. Um, so I would want to make a really nice landing page. You can boost conversion on your landing page by doing things like having a 3D graphic of the book that you're gonna give away. Um, for example, I could replace this logo um, with a book. So if I just grab one of my books and put it there, um, you can change the size of your images. You can get used to, like MailChimp does a lot of things. It's just, there's a lot of options. So I think it's a little harder to get used to it. Um, but this would be my landing page. I could add a really cool dark background. Um, if I go to settings, whoops, design page, background, add an image. I'm just going to grab, I don't know what, something that I, from the castle, when we stayed in the castle a couple months ago. Um, anyway, so you can make a decent looking one. Um, I would also add a few reviews down here and then maybe your picture, your author bio, uh, a signature. Um, you basically want to get them familiar with you and your face and your name as, as much as possible before they even sign up to your list. So you want like on your offer, on your landing page, on your thank you page, you want your name and your face so that when you start sending them emails, they recognize who you are and they remember they signed up. Otherwise they might mark it as spam because they don't know who is sending them emails. And it also might boost conversion on the page. Um, so it's nice they added this feature. I think it's a little too, it's too little too late for me because they didn't have this feature like a month ago or two when I was thinking about um, switching. And like I said, it's a little bit hard if you're getting used to things. Like I was already used to MailChimp working one way and then they moved things around. So it took me a little while to figure things out. The other thing that kind of bothered me, well, a couple more things that bothered me with campaigns. Um, with campaigns now, you don't have any autoresponder automation, anything. So they've moved it all here to ongoing. Um, which just means I could send a campaign and create a campaign, which would be one email that goes out to my list. Um, or I could create an autoresponder series or a drip campaign so that when they sign up for my list, they get, you know, 12 emails or 24 emails every three days or whatever. Um, but that's all here under the ongoing. Um, and I can see my series, but it doesn't tell me how many, um, how many emails are in this autoresponder series. I think it should do that so that I would be able to tell the ones that are paused tell me how many emails are in the series, but they should do that for the rest of them. Um, and the other thing that bothered me, it bothered me when I was trying to set up um, a new autoresponder series. And by the way, you do that by you go to create campaign, and then you have to go to create an email, which I think is misleading. And then you can choose automated, um, and then you choose welcome new subscribers and then you can choose welcome onboarding or education, which are kind of all the same. They just pre-populate um, a few basic emails, but that just seems like a difficult way to find your automation. It should be a lot easier to get there. Um, and here's just a sample one that I set up today when I was playing around to show you how it works. So um, I chose um, welcome email education series. So it just automatically um, generates these and I have to I had to um, I can add an email down here but that's just a basic email then I can design the email so I can go up to the templates that I've saved I have to add something here Um, you basically want to set up one really good email and design it the way that you want it. They have some templates which look good. These are also, they haven't been around that long. So um, it's nice that MailChimp is starting to offer some of these. That makes it a little bit easier. You want to design one really well with your logo and make it look the way that you want it. Um, your colors and everything. Uh, and then you can save it as a theme. Oh, there's also these themes, which is interesting. I haven't seen these before. So these are themes. Um, that they're probably adding to try to make MailChimp better and easier to use. Specific themes, which is kind of nice. I mean, there's a lot of options there um, to get you started. So you can do that or you can save some campaigns that you've set. Or for me, I was um, setting up an autoresponder series, so I had to go to campaigns recently sent. But basically, you have to just choose some theme to put in your autoresponder series. 
and then customize it and tweak it. Um, and that's fine. That's There's nothing really wrong with any of that. But I was having trouble replicating the emails, which is one of the reasons that I really was um, frustrated and ready to switch because I guess here when I'm setting up new emails, I can't replicate it. I can only design it or um, delete it. I have to click start and then I can replicate it. So when I was setting up a new autoresponder series, um, it wasn't live yet. And so I couldn't replicate anything. So I had to go and like make one email and then go pick a template and design it. Um, it was just a lot more work. And what should have happened is I would make one email and I could just click and replicate it to make the rest of the emails. Um, so I've realized that was my mistake. It's it's not that you can't do that. It's just that you have to, let me go back um, and I'll show you what I mean. Oops. So if I was setting up a new autoresponder series from scratch, I'd go to create campaign, create an email, automated, welcome to subscribers. Um, and I start. And then it gives me a few emails to play with. But if I designed this email, I couldn't replicate this email. Um, and I wouldn't really want to just keep adding a new one because I want to, I really want to just design one and then just replicate it a whole bunch of times if I'm making a bunch of, of emails. Um, but what I have to do is design one, edit the workflow settings. Oops. And I have to make it live. Like I have to publish. I go here to next. Um, and before I can send it, I have to finish actually setting up those emails. And when they're finished setting up, then it'll let me make it live or send it, and then I can replicate. Um, anyway, it's it's not really a big deal. It's just kind of frustrating and, and not the way I was used to. I, I'd have to finish the automation to start making the automation. Um, so that was a little frustrating for me. And that's not actually something that's solved with MailerLite. Um, but I still feel like the user interface is a lot more intuitive and easier to get around. So you have subscribers, which is your lists, you have forms, and you have automation. So it's not like buried five or six menus deep. It's just in the menu where you have um, automation. It's one thing on your panel. It's one of the main things on your panel. Um, under automation, I can create a new workflow. And the workflow looks like this. So I set up a workflow trigger, um, which is just when subscriber joins a group. You can also do groups or segments. Um, I'll just pick testing. So to get it started, when someone signs up to, to a group, then um, they're on your email list. So then you can set an email or a delay, which is mostly what you want to be using. Um, you'll have an email email one, design the email. And so you also can't replicate these, which I th is a shame because that's really the way I would want to do it. Um, but it's not too much of a problem. You can go to the templates gallery. Another light also has some really nice looking um, templates, or you can go to recent emails to pick an email that you sent recently. So as long as you set up one email, this is this the process you would go through. Um, you would just go in here and pick your first email and keep um, using that template to make the rest of your emails. And you can go back and um, tweak it or edit it later to customize all of them. You can also add um, the delay. So maybe I want this to send an hour after they signed up just to make sure that they got everything they signed up for. I'd go down here, I'd do a one day delay and then add another email, which will be email two. And you could just skip the design email for now and save it um, and go down here, delay. This is also, I mean, it's not the easiest I process in the world. Um, doesn't take that long. Whoops. Email three. 
So I think the step that's that's missing, I think you should be able to just make one email and just replicate it a bunch of times here. Um, you can't do that, but that's all right. You can't really do that in MailChimp either. Um, instead, you have to click design the email and pick the template, save it, go to the next one, design the email, click the template. Anyway, but you might want to map out your email autoresponder series by subject first and then just go back and pick the template and then just go back and, and edit them. But you can do some more advanced stuff with MailerLite I kind of like, um, which is, for example, conditions. So I can choose if people do certain things. Um, for example, workflow activity, email one. Um, had any link clicked, had a specific link clicked, then I could choose one of the links, which is kind of cool because, for example, maybe in my welcome email, I offer them a free book. Um, later, I could set it up to talk to them differently if they've downloaded the book or if they haven't downloaded the book. So I know if they've downloaded the book, you know, I can say, hey, thanks for downloading it. Please review it. If they haven't downloaded it, I could say, make sure you download the book. It's only available for two more days and then I'm going to stop making it free or something like that um, to kind of keep encouraging them to download and start reading. So these are more advanced features. I don't know that I will even be using them because I, I am not that careful with how I segment and organize my email list. I would rather just keep sending content to everybody. Um, but these are these are really nice features if you want to get into those like more advanced email marketing um, or specific stuff like, for example, if they have bought a product, you would want to be sending them different emails. So if they click a link, if they buy something from you, then you would want to switch them. Um, let me go back and show one more thing. Um, you'd want to switch them to a different list. You'd want to send them different emails to be like, thanks for buying. Here's how to get started using the product. Or if they didn't buy something from you, then you'd keep selling it. Um, so there's sometimes like you wouldn't want to be sending everyone out well, for me, it's not a huge deal, but like if someone bought your product, you want to, you don't want to keep selling it to them. Um, so it's somewhere this could be useful. Let me delete this one. Um, the other kind of nice thing you can do is you can set an action to move them to a list. So for example, if I got them to sign up for a free offer. I send them an autoresponder series about that specific offer. Maybe they signed up for formatting. I want to teach them about formatting. Um, but after, you know, 10 emails, if I don't have more things to talk about, I might just move them to my main list um, where they'll get other updates about other activity. Because um, I don't want to like, I don't want to have to write a different email and send it to all of my different lists. Um, I want to kind of pull people together on one main list. So after they've gone through my welcome autoresponder series for a specific offer, I'd want to move them on to a main list that I just send updates to or a different list. So that's something you can do automatically previously, like on MailChimp. Um, you can probably do this on MailChimp, but I've just been like every three months removing my list, um, putting it somewhere else or, or uploading it onto my main list, just kind of moving subscribers around manually. Um, this would do it automatically for you, which I think is pretty neat. One of the other little features that really incentivized me to switch to MailerLite um, was it has this auto resend campaign. So up here in the menu, like I said, it's really simple. You have automation, your forms, your subscribers, which is your email list, um, and campaigns. I think these should be different things, your automation versus your campaigns. Um, but under campaigns, when you want to send out an email, you can do an auto resend campaign. So you can automatically resend an email to unopens, for example. And you're basically sending it to people who didn't open your first campaign. You can quickly change the email subject or you can test a couple different um, types of subjects. You could also do this with an A-B split campaign. But the idea of auto resend is um, if you have something big, like you have a big, big book launch, this is like your big thing that you're building a list for, um, but you only get a 30% open. 70% of your people aren't even opening your email. They're not seeing your information. So you would want to resend that email to the people who didn't um, open. And in MailChimp, it's kind of frustrating to do that. You have to make a segment of people who didn't open a previous email and then send it to them. Um, yeah, it's very, it's possible. It's just a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, and I like that it's simpler here, which means I'll probably use it more often. I generally don't send auto resend campaigns, um, 
But, you know, if you get 30% opens the first time, 70% didn't open your list, if you auto-resend the, the campaign, you get an extra 10% of people opening your email. Um, that's really valuable. So I, I may not do it all the time, but I would do it for, for really big stuff or promotions or book launches where, you know, every sale, every download really counts. Um, I would want to make sure to make use of this auto-resend um, feature. So for those reasons, I think not only is MailerLite a little bit more powerful than MailChimp, it's also just so much easier to use. And maybe MailChimp, you know, it's possible to do some of this stuff, but it's so technical and advanced that most people are never going to discover um, how to use it appropriately. So with MailerLite, the features are built in, so it's a lot easier to find um, and use, uh, which should produce better results. And so the third reason that I'm moving to MailerLite um, is just the design, the style of design, and specifically the landing pages that they have. And this is something I showed you on MailChimp. MailChimp has recently introduced landing pages as well, but it's really just one default landing page that you have to customize um, yourself. In MailerLite, under Forms and under Landing Pages, um, they have some templates that already look decent. They don't have lots of templates, um, so you can still tweak and edit and, and make them um, customize for your own content, but they do have some templates. So I would just pick testing, pick a list that you want your landing page to go to, and you can choose one of these um, defaults. And one of the really nice things I like about the landing page, and I mentioned this um, recently, I actually had it screwed up, but when you build a landing page, let me just select this one. Um, you can set up the landing page the way that you want to, but you also have a success page or a thank you page. So immediately after signing up, you can choose what you show them. Um, and there are probably ways to do this in MailChimp where you can send them to a certain page after they sign up, like a thank you page. But it is really important um, after you customize the landing page, you want a really nice looking landing page. I do think you should have something like this that's your, like your, your picture, your name, um, a short biography because people may not sign up if they don't know who's going to get their email. You might also want to add some um, reviews that are like, this email list is amazing. You really want people to, like you want to get over the, the objections just because someone clicks on your link and finds your landing page. Most, like maybe 50% of those people are going to sign up. So a lot of people just take a closer look at what you're offering and they still don't feel comfortable giving your email. So you want to boost conversions by you know, providing trust, putting your picture there, um, making them feel a little more comfortable, really focusing on the specific benefits that they're going to get. So I like that you can customize a landing page. I like that you can build um, a nice looking landing page here because previously I've been using ClickFunnels, which is fine, but um, with MailerLite, I may not need to use ClickFunnels anymore. Um, I could just send people straight to this landing page It'll probably convert better. It'll definitely convert better to like this list that I was, I'm still using on MailChimp. This is just the simple one I set up. Um, and so my new one, let me go back and show you. So this is a new landing page I set up just for one specific book offer. So at the end of my free sample on Amazon, there's a link straight to this page. Um, I set it up, um, a few weeks ago, maybe like a month ago, but I didn't actually send any traffic to it until a couple weeks ago. And it's gotten 200 visitors and 100 subscribers, um, which isn't great, 50% conversion. So I would still want to think about improving conversion. Um, and then I'm doing some things wrong. I'll show you what they are. I also like that on the landing page settings, you can choose double opt-in or single opt-in. It's just right there. It's really simple and easy to see. This is the landing page. You can customize this to your own website, but it's a little technical, so I didn't bother. I think this is um, fine the way it is. You can also tweak the page settings. So for example, when I just copied this subscribe page, like if I put it on Facebook or Twitter and I'm like, hey, sign up to my email list, um, I can choose which picture it uses on Facebook, or I could set up the page settings and titles or allow search engines to index this landing page, which I, I chose not to. Um, let me show you how it looks. It looks like this, which is not terrible. Um, 
I actually changed the cover, so this cover I need to get rid of. It's not the right cover anymore. I have some reviews here, but I haven't put any pictures here. Um, I don't, they're reviews on Amazon, so I can't really get pictures of the people anyway. If these were my reviewers on my email list, I could ask them if I could use their faces. If I don't use their faces, I should get rid of these um, images because this gray, like this um, anonymous guy here, that's not really building trust. So some people might see this and they'll see that it's kind of a broken page or it's not set up all the way. Um, so like if people are clicking the link in the back of my book, but only 50% of those are actually signing up, I'm doing something wrong on this page and I could still be doing a little bit better. But like I said, one of the really nice things about the landing pages is that the success page um, or thank you page is just immediate. And I actually just realized I didn't set mine up. So when people sign up to this list, they get shown this page, which has just this bizarre um, default book thing here, um, which is probably pretty confusing. I need to fix that pretty soon, but I like that people can sign up to my list and I can immediately send them to a thank you page where they can download the free book um, right away. This is also somewhere I would say something like, this was um, where I could start building the relationship. I'd want to have my picture and my biography again. I might want to have a bonus giveaway or a share to unlock. So people would sign up and then they would um, immediately see, you know, here's your free book and I'd like to give you another free book. Um, the idea is if they're already, like you've got them on, on your list. If they reach this page, they're on your list. You have their email, um, but you also, you also want to get them to take another action and share something so that you might get more subscribers. Like if you can get one subscriber and they share it on social media, you can get more people um, to sign up to your list that can become a little bit viral. So you want to do a little bit more than just getting them on your list. You want to give them some free stuff and you want to encourage them um, to share with an immediate giveaway. So I wouldn't do like a giveaway stacking, but if, I, if this is an opt-in to get a free book, um, I might immediately offer them a giveaway to win something bigger, like $100 in Amazon credit. And normally for giveaways, I wouldn't offer $100 in Amazon credit because if it's just an open giveaway for anybody, I'll get tons of people who don't read my genre, who aren't my ideal readers, who just want the cash. Um, so I don't do giveaways for cash prizes, but if they're already on my list and I already know that they're the right kind of readers who are interested in my genre, then I can offer a cash prize um, to boost the incentive, to get them to download or to, to share something else. Um, so then that like a, a cash prize, even like a $20 Amazon credit um, or something simple like, you know, every tw every month I give away a $20 Amazon credit. If you want to win, just, you know, shout out on social media or share something on social media. There's stuff like that you can do to try to get them to take an immediate action. This is also where you could do an upsell if you are writing nonfiction. Um, maybe you have a free book and then in your email funnel, you're going to try to convince them to upgrade to uh, an intro offer or low cost tripwire or more expensive um, like your core offer, an online course or something like that, um, this is where you could offer them a one-time only discount. So for example, if they sign up for my DIY book formatting templates on the success page, I could immediately say, you know, get 60% off. This is a one-time only offer to thank you for signing up. You'll never see a price this low again. Um, and the idea is to get some people, you may only get like 10% um, to immediately upgrade, but 10% is pretty good. If you can get um, you know, if you get 10 subscribers and you have a $17 PDF or something and you get one out of 10 people to, to buy your immediate offer, um, you could be very quickly paying off the cost of your email list and also maybe generating some, some revenue that you could spend on advertising your free offer to get more emails to your list faster. So I'm a big fan of these landing pages and success pages. Um, they're not perfect. There are a few temperamental things about designing them um, that aren't my favorite things in the world, but they work pretty well. They're intuitive. They, they, The conversion rates that I've seen already have been pretty good, so I'm pretty happy about that. And the other thing they have in MailerLite with forms, um, they also have these embedded forms. So I could create an embedded form that is either it's either an embedded form that you put on your website or it's a button form. So some people have said you'll get better results if you have a button first, like on your opt-in, on your sidebar or on your content 
somewhere if you have a button that clicks to open a pop-up or a form. Some people say that converts better than just having an embedded form on your site. So that's something you kind of want to test, um, but it's nice that you can make these options. You can choose the list that you want it to go to. Um, and then you can set up your form and design it a little bit. There's quite a lot of customization. You can choose a page background even. Um, so you could make the you could make this form look pretty good. I haven't tested like embedding this form on my WordPress site to see how it works. That's not generally something I would do. I usually would just put a button or something. I'll probably play more with this um, soon. You can choose a vertical something for maybe your sidebar, which is probably only about 300 pixels. So this could go right on your sidebar. It would look pretty good with a little um, tweaking. My sidebar forms are really are really crappy because um, I've been using Mailchimp, and it's actually not that easy to take Mailchimp's opt-in forms and put them in your WordPress sidebar. It should be easier, and there are some plugins that help with that. Um, but I haven't found it to be very easy, so I might go redo mine and um, make something like this for my sidebar, or even like I showed you to add a button that goes to a uh, an opt-in form, um, but you can also make it horizontal and make it much wider. So if this is content, like if this is at the bottom of an article on your website and you want to have a specific content upgrade for that article, um, a form like this would be pretty nice. And if I, I forget if I already showed you um, one other feature I really like, so I'll go through there now. Um, in one of the other automation series that I set up, which looks something like this. There's, um, well, there's two other features I don't think I've mentioned that I really like with Miller Lite. Um, one is the signature feature. So down here at the bottom, um, I set this up, which I think is important to have your, a picture of you, thanks again, your signature, your um, social media profiles. These are separate from the share buttons um, down at the bottom. So I set all of this up. I think it's important to have this kind of stuff at the bottom of your emails. Um, but this is a default setting. Here I can just choose signature and it automatically comes up like that. I can change the positioning really easy. Um, and you don't have to put your email, your phone number, it depends on your business, what you want to include. I might want to actually put like my main website because you want people to be familiar with the website also. Um, but I like that I was able to add that easily in MailChimp. I, I could set something like that up, um, but there's not just like a one click easy feature to set it up. And also I like that because I do a lot of videos um, and a lot of YouTube videos spe specifically. So I like that in Miller Lite, I can go down here and add a video. MailChimp also has something like this, but when you do it in MailChimp, and I'm just putting a link straight to a YouTube video, in MailChimp it'll generate um, an image, kind of a placeholder image based on the video um, or a thumbnail. But with Miller Lite, it'll create an animated GIF. So when I add a link to YouTube, it automatically makes this animated image preview, which kind of looks like I'm talking already. So I think that's a cool feature. I think it's probably more likely to get more clicks to the video, um, which will boost uh, YouTube views. I'm trying to get, I have over a million YouTube views now, and that's, it's nice to be able to say I have that many, but the more people you get on YouTube, the more you can kind of build trust and drive them back to one of your websites and hopefully sell a book or get them to sign up for something. Um, so I've been trying to include a lot of my YouTube videos in my new autoresponder series. One thing that I, a couple of things I'm not totally happy with, with um, Miller Lite, let me delete that one. They have these templates. So for example, when you click and you add new, you can add two news or three news. When you add two news, it looks something like this. Um, but like if you wanna put an image here and text over here, it's a little weird. You just have to basically you delete the text from this side, just delete all the text, and then you leave the image on this side. Like I would add an image here. Um, I've basically already done this below so you can see it, but so this is kind of what it looks like. You need just not to add an image at all if you don't want an image to show up, if I just want two columns of text, um, or I need to like, not add an image on this side and remove the text on this side so that there's an image with text on this side 
um, and vice versa. So that seems a little weird to me that they there isn't a better way to, to do that. And maybe I just haven't figured it out yet because um, I'm still pretty new at, at Miller Lite. Um, anyway, so these are reasons why I'm excited about Miller Lite. I'm still moving over my email list for MailChimp and then I'm going to be rewriting all of my autoresponder series to have um, basically to focus more on relationship building. I haven't been doing my autoresponder series well, especially for fiction, so that's something I really want to improve in 2018. Um, and then after I've done that, after I have a really powerful autoresponder series that sells more books, um, I can focus more on organic opt-ins because I do get quite a bit of traffic. I've been using giveaways or free books to build an email list, um, but I'm not using my organic traffic as well as I should. I have several thousand um, visitors a day over my websites, um, and I, I'm not using opt-in forms or offers or web design the way that I could be. I could easily double my subscribers just with a few tweaks. So once I've rewritten my autoresponder series, I'll be going back and um, redesigning my websites to focus on boosting organic opt-ins from website traffic.